Hello, everybody, and welcome to Early Access Podcast, episode 85, and this is the one you've all been waiting for. It is the announcement of the giveaway for the Fallout 4 Pip-Boy Edition for PC. Um, so after a long 30-day contest, um, I finally picked a winner. Um, it took a couple rolls of the dice. Now, these were people that were, um, unfortunately... It, um, disqualified because they're not from the United States like unfortunately it had to be somebody from the United States and I had to disqualify multiple people um, and redraw uh, you know it just so happened it was just like Germany Spain Singapore and I'm sorry I wish I could um, send it overseas uh, unfortunately it's just like the way contest rules work I just couldn't do that um, so without further ado um, the winner which was the first person I drew, um, is actually from my home state up in north, northern New Jersey, and it is Andrew W., and they were from Eastern, uh, East Orange, New Jersey. It's way up north. I'm way down south. This is, uh, this is somebody up in, uh, it's basically almost New York, essentially. It's up, up that far. Um, I'm all the way down by, like, Philadelphia, basically, like, Delaware, Philadelphia. So congratulations to Andrew W., um, I already got into, I already reached out and got in contact with them. I'm gonna get it shipped out to them as soon as possible. Um, from what I understand, they're giving it to their girlfriend as a Christmas present, which I find awesome. So I'm gonna send it priority. Um, you know, it's gonna be a little bit more, but I want to make sure he gets it by Christmas so it can be underneath the tree. Um, I was super happy to get in touch with this with this person, and congratulations and thank you, thank you everybody for supporting the show and entering the contest. Um, now I know usually after one of these contests, a lot of people fall off. Um, you know the YouTube channel, the Twitter channel. Please stay, stay following. Uh, keep up with the show. Um, hold on one second. Okay. So yes, please um, stay stay up to date with the show because um, coming up soon, I uh, I will be having another Fallout related contest because. Um, this past Friday, um, Target re-released more uh, Quantum Nuka-Cola, and I happened to get an extra bottle. Um, so I went during work hours <laughs> um, to get this for you guys. So I got myself one, and I got an extra one. They were limit two per person. So um, coming up is going to be the one-year anniversary of the show in February. So I will be giving away uh, a bottle of Fallout New Coca-Cola. Uh, it's really cool. I don't know if you guys have seen it because, you know, they were pretty limited. But um, it's got like a little little blurb on the back. It says, Bethesda Game Studios, the award-winning creators of Fallout 3 and Skyrim, welcome you to the world of Fallout 4, their most ambitious game ever and the next generation of open-world gaming. As a sole survivor of Vault 111, you enter a world destroyed by nuclear war. Only you can rebuild and determine the fate of the wasteland. Welcome home. Fallout arrives 11, 10, 15. Save your caps. Uh, so it's a berry lemonade soda. It's made by Jones Soda. Um, they make really good soda. I haven't drank it, you know, because I don't want to open it. Um, but so I'm going to be giving this away pretty soon. Um, actually, you know what? I do have a consolation prize, which I will... Can I... Will it let me... Other winner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, give away this. I'm going to give away the Fallout 4 patch that I got in the contest that I won through the Enter the Vault contest um, to a second person. I'm going to pick somebody at random and I will mail this out to you um, as soon as I get contact information and all that stuff from uh, that second winner. Um, but again, thank you guys for entering. Don't forget, just hang out. Enjoy the show. Um, you know, play some indie games, follow the show. Um, learn some more stuff about early access gaming and indie games. <laughs> but again, thank you for entering. Um, it, it's been great. I've gotten a lot of uh, a lot of feedback on the on the site, uh, and a lot of interaction from people. Uh, I wish I had more stuff to give away sooner, um, but you know, I thought it was a big contest, and I, I'm happy that everybody that entered did enter. And um, like I said, I do appreciate it. It, it was a lot of fun uh, getting getting to meet new people, ha getting some people to watch the show that normally may not have uh, checked it out before. Um, and it was a good investment in myself, and I, I'm happy for it. Um, so it's been pretty hectic, you know, with, with Christmas coming up and all. Um, this coming show is going to be the Game of the Year show. I decided to push it back since this one was going to be the 
the announcement show. So again, th- uh, congratulations, Andrew W. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the announcement show for the game uh, for the for the contest. So um, I didn't want to make it too long. So the next episode is just going to be completely. It's going to be the Christmas Eve episode. Um, it's going to be completely about um, game of the year stuff in the game and uh, early access game of the year. Um, so I'm still compiling a list. It's going to be like my top five. Um, you know, there's not too many early access games that tend to be worth putting onto a game of the year list, but there's enough that I can at least recommend a few. Um, and again, if you guys have any ideas of anything I should try to play before the next episode over the next couple of days, um, please uh, hit me up on Twitter at Early Access PC. Uh, let me know if there's anything I should uh, check out and get my hands on and try to, or at least do some research on, at least to give like you know some mentions, maybe games that I haven't touched on. Um, I haven't touched on in the past past year. Um, so I did get a couple minutes to play a game, though. Um, I haven't played the expansion, which is why I got this game in the first place, um, because I just hadn't had the time. But I did get a chance to play through the tutorial and uh, get a little into Magicka 2. So I got through the first couple like stages of it. Um, it's like broken up into chapters. So I got through the first couple chapters. And so Magicka 2 came out in May. At the end of May, May 26, it's fifteen dollars. It's the sequel to Magicka, and more importantly, to Wizard Wars. Um, I spoke about it before a couple episodes ago, and how it's got mixed reviews. It's got, it's got two thousand reviews, it's like sixty-eight percent positive. Um, the reason why is because it's more simplified, streamlined version of um, the the spell system. Because the way, if you've never played Magicka before, the way it works is you have access to eight different spells. You have fire, you have water. Uh, earth, you have life, death, um, fire, water, life, death, earth, lightning, I think is the other one. Um, and so what you do is you hit the key, like you combine those elements to do different spells. So there's all the different spells you can combine, you can hit keys for up to five of them. Um, you know, there's some rules that are involved about like what contradicts what and everything like that. But it's pretty straightforward. So basically, if you did, like, fire water, it would create a steam spell. Um, If you did, you know, uh, earth a couple times and you did did fire, when you cast it, it would be like a flaming, um, basically like a boulder, like a boulder that's on fire. Uh, You can cast different kinds of shields on on yourself. So you can have, like, you know, a big stone shield or you can put your fire shield up. You can cast, um, like, protection runes on yourself that would prevent damage from certain types of elements like the 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 um the equivalent type of element you can also protect put protection runes on you that would actually heal you if you got hit by that kind of element um so it's still pretty in depth however what they did was they did do some stuff where there's four different hotkeys now built built into the game so you can choose a, a spell and, and instead of have to click the like say it's complicated say it's like a four key or a four um four element spell that you want to cast um you don't have to do that you can assign it to one of the four hot keys um it's the one through four buttons there i think it's like the bumpers and the triggers on the on the controller um actually i'm not even sure maybe the d-pad but anyway so you could preset them basically and then they have like a little cooldown on them based on what they are but it makes it a little bit easier so it kind of streamlines that part of it um, but other than that from what I understand there was an update that got it more close to the first Magicka because when I jumped in it reminded me of the first Magicka it didn't feel that different as far as casting spells it's an incredibly deep game um, if you had never played the previous ones this is a great game um, I understand the reviews are mixed only because of the fact that it's like a lot of people are, it's people that have played the game, the other games, and they're trying to compare it to those. So it, it is a little same-ish as, like, a sequel. You know, it's a lot of the same stuff. You're playing the same spells a lot. It's a lot of the same type of gameplay. Um, however, if you've never played one of those types, like, one of these games before, either Magicka or um, Wizard Wars, it's a great game to pick up. 15 bucks. it's got a really cool different kind of mechanic in that spell casting mechanic um it looks great uh, the frame rate's great it's it's got better graphics than the previous two games so for fifteen dollars i would totally recommend it um however for the dlc i don't know yet i do have um access to the newest dlc which is a couple like 
standalone scenarios that are harder. They have different uh, bosses and stuff like that. So I'm going to try one of those. I'm probably going to pick one and do a quick look of just one of those videos. But I did just want to get out there and say that I did play it and I actually enjoyed it. Um, but I think it's because I'm also f pretty far removed from the previous Magicka games. Um, I haven't played them in a long time. And even the last one, Wizard Wars, I wasn't really that into. Um, I played it. It was fun. But I, don't, I didn't play that much of it. I played it during the beta and like it was... It was a fun game, but I didn't get too into it. Um, but yeah, go go check out Magicka 2. Links in the show notes. It's a pretty cool game. Um, so I grabbed a couple games. One's indie and one's... Uh, well, they're both indie games, but one's early access. The other one's not. So as far as the early access one goes, this one's called Minds of Mars. Uh, it's got five reviews. All of them are positive. It just came out the other day. And it's sitting at $6... Um, because it's 15% off until Christmas Day, so it's usually 7 bucks. Uh, it looks like it's totally worth your money, though. So it's an interesting game where, see, I don't like it. There's no tags defined for this game. So I had to do a little reading up on it. So it's a procedurally generated mining game that um, they say it's t takes its inspiration from a game like Metroid or Motherload. Um, so you're a little minor guy on Mars and you're playing through this platforming uh, side, not side scrolling, but this like platforming uh, digger game. Basically it's like, um, I'm trying to think of a comparison, uh, maybe Terraria, you know, where you're destroying blocks and stuff, but it's a lot more action oriented than that. Uh, it doesn't seem like you're building bases or anything like a, like a survival game is, but you are going through and mining your way, um, you're getting better guns. You're trying to collect money, and you're just trying to, I guess, kind of survive. But it's procedure generated, so it seems like it's more of a, um, like a roguelike style game than anything. Um, I think the graphics are pretty cool. It's like a pixel art style, like a higher resolution pixel art style. Um, the character designs are really cool. I like the spaceships. I like the uh, the different monsters. It seems like you have a bunch of different uh, guns. Um, lighting in these kinds of games has gotten way better, um, thanks to programs and everything so the game looks beautiful for for a pixel art style like type of game um <clears throat> excuse me so for the price point i think it's pretty perfect so go check that out minds of mars pretty cheap only six bucks um yeah it's, got, it's totally worth your six dollars i'd imagine um let's see what does it say i really enjoyed the ios version of this game oh that's disappointing so there is an ios version of this game so um However, I do like the control. It, it, I mean, I've played plenty of games like this on the PC, so if it if it plays well enough, I would go check it out. But I would also go try to find a quick look of it, or um, you know, see if it's cheap enough on on the on the iOS, like in the App Store on Apple. And if it's like ninety nine cents, go check it out over there. Actually, let's see if we can find it. Minds of Mars, iOS. Um, Minds of Mars on the App Store, iTunes. Okay, so it's also five bucks on the App Store. It's got f seven reviews, four and a half stars on there. Um, it looks like the exact same game, though. So I'm sure it just plays better. Um, so go check that out. That seems like fun. Actually, while I'm here, let's see if anybody's reviewed the show. Nope, nobody likes me. <laughs> I kid, I don't give a shit. Come on, close. <laughs> All right, so I got one more game for you guys. And this is an indie game that caught my eye um, just because of the name so it's called mystery of the unicorn castle the beastmaster now this has no reviews yet it's on sale until again until christmas it's 10 bucks but it's 25 percent off just 750 for the next few days now this is an interesting looking game where it's kind of like it looks like a point and click adventure um it, like a horror point and click adventure but I'm just so confused. Like, the name of it is just fascinating to me. It looks really interesting. It's definitely a puzzle game, so there's a bunch of different kinds of puzzles in it. Uh, it looks really nice for, for this style of game. I don't know what else to say. It looks like you're in this castle, in Unicorn Castle, and um, you are solving puzzles, trying to figure out uh, the mystery, and it's like you're trying to save this little girl. Um, it looks really cool, though. The, the graphics are really neat for this kind of game. Like I said, it's just like... You know, there's a lot happening. There, there is, it's animated more than like a uh, typical point-and-click style adventure game. Um, it looks really neat, and it's like a choose-your-own-adventure style game. Uh, I wish it had a review so I can give you a little bit more um, information about it. But it's uh, developed by Meridian93, 
published by 1C Online Games. So if you know anything about these guys, let's see. Oh, that's unfortunate. So this guy's got two other games up with one negative review each. Oh, they all came out the same day. That's weird. Let's see. Well, that's, this has a positive um, and a negative review, but you can't read the negative review. It's called Twilight City. And there's another one called Book of Desires that has a negative review, but I also can't read that one either. Um, all three of them look similarly good, like as far, as far as the art style goes. Um, yeah, they're all like hidden object puzzle adventure games. I don't know. I know th this one's a puzzle. I don't know. This one says it's a hidden object game. The other one doesn't say that. It looks like the mystery of Unicorn Castle looks like something else. Uh, so maybe do a little bit more research because I don't know about these companies. Let's see. Royal Quest. So it looks like um, so 1C did a bunch of these kinds of games and then they did Royal Quest which is a mixed review uh, free to play MMO from August of 2000, 2014 um, from the guys that did King's Bounty. So it looks like King's Bounty actually looks really cool. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. That's weird. Um, but yeah, that's that's gonna do it for this episode, guys. It's pretty short. Um, look forward to uh, to Wednesday's episode where I'm gonna do the game of the year stuff. Again, congratulations to Andrew W. Um, awesome for for you. I'm I'm happy that it's going to somebody else as a Christmas present. It's not just for you. Uh, I like when people uh, do that kind of stuff. Uh, he was he was super excited um, when I talked to him. So that's going to be in the mail soon. I'm going to pick another winner for the Fallout 4 patch. And that's going to do it for this episode, guys. As usual, don't forget Amazon.com. Um, I mean, not Amazon. Click through the Amazon banner on EarlyAccessMedia.com. Definitely helps out the show. Um, follow us on Twitter, Early Access PC. S subscribe to the YouTube channel, Early Access Podcast on YouTube. Um, you know, go play some indie games. Get out there, do that. Uh, if not, I'll see you guys for Christmas Eve. Uh, actually, it'll be Christmas Day when it comes out. So, happy holidays and Merry Christmas. And until next time, guys, it's Angela with Early Access Media and EarlyAccessPodcast.com. And I'll see you next time.